I'm going to uh, begin, uh, Brendan, just by asking uh, initially about Diane. Uh, yeah. I mean, when you share kind of great experiences like you did with her on this movie, and then you were say to go back and watch, say, Annie Hall, does it alter the way you watch other films? I mean, have you noticed that across your career? But if you work with like a co-star, yeah. can, can, do you have a different relationship with their other characters and other movies they've made going back? And watching yeah, them? and hopefully it's, hopefully it's, um, it's, it's an addition, you know, like, yeah, it, there's a kind of a thrill, and at the same time, there's a kind of a you know some of the mystique of it. Um, you're kind of saying, I, I saw her when she was in that mood at some point, <laughs> and it's lovely. Uh, but it takes it it takes the, I suppose the separation between the film and your own life, it takes it away a little bit. You're a little you know the, the older I get, the more. I'm starting to I escaped it for a long time where you know the technical aspects of things. I'm beginning to become a little impatient when I see something that's a little uh, not great. So you're becoming oh, becoming overly aware. Like I love to go to a movie and forget that I I know how it works. And with her, that's pretty much what happens all the time, is that you you forget everything except that that's that's what's happening now, and that's what a, the real gift is. You know, that's why she's a star. She's she she makes you forget everything except what's happening right in there in that screen. And I mean, I imagine working for her must be sort of gloriously unpredictable because she's, I mean, she's at times just quite nuts in, in a really endearing way. <laughs> it must have been quite fun to, to be working with someone that has that sense of, I don't know, volatility, but a, a good, the good sense. Yeah, but it's a volatility that's not based on, she's, she has a volatility, but not, not based on um, what's best for her at the time. It's a volatility about how best to do the thing, how, uh, you know, what way it strikes her at that particular point. She always tries to play the truth of the scene as it, as it is. So there is definitely an unpredictability about it. Uh, which is good to counter too much preparedness, you know what I mean? Too much preparedness is the enemy too. So, but it takes, a while, it takes a little bit of dancing around to make sure that the combination is kind of good between, um, you know, it's the same with directors, same with actors. Uh, you need prepared be, to be prepared, but then you need to be able to throw it away. And uh, she has that in spades, you know. And are you much of a sort of seasoned camper? Is that not really your thing? You <laughs> not anymore, no. no. I was, I used to, I used to love all that. Um, no, too old, too many creaky bits. Yeah. <laughs> so if you were to just go off and build a shack anywhere in the world, where would you like to, to A very it? comfortable place. So, well, that's <laughs> it'd be a pretty great place. Oh, I can think of a lot of places you'd like to build a shack. Although I don't think I would be able to, I don't think I'd have the fortitude to be able to do it on my own. Um, I do find it interesting, the notion of, buying into society and buying out of it. I don't think, I know that for me the answer is like, I, there are two truths, I love to be in and I love to be out. So the, the only truth is that I love both. And being able to pop in and pop out of society is the way everybody wants to be, I think. And one of the things I've always sort of admired about you as an actor is that you can never second guess your next role or, I mean, you sort of move just seamlessly between genres. Um, is that a sort of conscious effort on your part to always try something new and different or do you just sort of follow where the best sort of characters are? Um, there would be a certain kind of, yeah, there was hankering after, you know, a role like this I, uh, I would have wanted to play for a while, just um, really more in terms of the romantic aspect where, uh, you know, I tend to try to uh, second guess characters that I get in terms of if, you've, if he's essentially a bad person, I tend to, tend to find, you know, some redeeming quality and if he's essentially good, try to find some, um, you know, human flaws that are in, in everybody. With this, I was okay, conscious that he was irascible and cranky and stuff, but essentially he was a, a properly good human being, and that's and that that falls for somebody who is equally so, and that's kind of that was kind of cathartic. So I, I was kind of looking for something like this, to be honest. But then coming up, you've got Paddington Two, which I'm <laughs> ridiculously excited about. How does Knuckles fit into that? Now? Yeah, yeah, Knuckles, Knuckles is a crazy man. You don't <laughs> want to mess with Knuckles. No. I mean, he has a tattoo that he he doesn't even spell properly. Nice. So I'm his knuckles. <laughs> that says knuckles with an N. <laughs> so uh, this is a serious character we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, because I interviewed you for Calvary and I think you were men mentioned at the time that you were hoping to complete this um, glorified suicide trilogy with John Michael McDonough. Um, I was wondering if there's an update on that. Is that third film still in the pipeline or could, is there any discussions? I don't know. That was kind of putting the long finger. It was kind of, uh, you know, there's, the last thing we'd want to do would be to try to rush all that stuff uh, I, I, I've, I have, I'm not thinking about it. Um, for me, the two films stand their own anyway. Yeah. I've just done a thing, uh, Mr. Mercedes, which is uh, a 10-part uh, TV series in um, 
over in South Carolina, a Stephen King adaptation. And it was funny, there were a lot of the same aspects of, say, things from the guard and, you know, the, the character that I was playing, even though he, you know, he was from the novel. Um, but there were a lot of, there was a lot of crossover between that, those kind of characters. So, um, for me, it's like, it's just, I never thought it was a glorified suicide trilogy anyway. We always, myself and John, always disagreed over that. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, I'm not. I, it's very much in the long finger at the moment. Uh, that's the last I heard, and it's 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 fine. It kind of feels feels like it needs to settle now. It'd be it'd be a pity to rush at something um, for the for the sake of it. Thanks so much for your time. Today. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys.